Hi everybody, it's application time again. And as always, we start hearing all these myths about what you need to do and it's the best way to get into colleges. So we're here to dispel these myths for you. We've compiled the top five myths. Hi, this is The Coaching Educator with Rebecca M. Carroll. It's important for you to understand some of the terms before you start your applications. We have attached a glossary of terms so that there will be no confusion because you really do need to understand the difference between early decision and early admissions and regular and what is best for you. So look in the script and you'll find a PDF with the glossary of terms. Please feel free to download that and let's begin. So again, we're going to be going over the five common myths of college admissions and we're going to invite you to subscribe to our channel because we are going to be putting out every Tuesday, Tuesday tips. They're going to be short and brief little PowerPoints to help you understand the college admissions process. Myth number one, some secret strategy can get you admitted to college. Sorry, but there are no secret strategies. Basically, you need to have letters of recommendation for many of the colleges. You need to also develop yourself within the application in a way that shows who you are. You want to be authentic. So you don't want to think, what do admissions want to hear? You want to consider what, how, what and how you are going to be saying something and how you need to say it so that your voice comes out. Think less about what they want to hear. Think more about how you want to present yourself in an authentic way. You want to also join clubs and you want to show an interest and passion. Generally, that means that you're looking, you're joining a club or you're involved with something for several years so that you grow yourself within that club and you can speak to it. A genuine college application profile is typically a strong college application profile, so keep that in mind. Myth number two, relying on, ma on magazine lists of the best colleges is the best way to determine whether a college is right for you. One size does not fit all. And you really need to understand that. So it's important to understand that the magazine is looking at a national ranking versus there might be a couple colleges on that list. However, they don't match who you are. You might be someone who as much as you want to be in the city, you want to be able to look to within an hour, be able to go to a ski resort and be able to ski. I mean, this, these are all pieces that you need to understand about yourself and understand about the college. Is a large college your best bet? Oftentimes it's not. You might get swallowed up in it. Many times there aren't as many opportunities for research. So really consider the idea that you have to fit into that community and that community is looking for you. So you want to do campus visits as much as you can you want to do virtual visits. You want to look at the areas as well. One thing I always really recommend is take the college, look at that virtual tour, but then Google the actual center or the closest city that city or town that this college is located near and see what's in that area. And that's very, very important to do. So you really can do online research now, which is wonderful. And I want you to take that opportunity and take notes because they all start looking like each other. You also, if possible, you want to reach out to alumni and admissions representatives. You can actually look up the admissions counselors and many of them have attended that particular college. That's how you need to rank it. Not necessarily what a magazine says, but after doing your own personal research and knowing who you are and your hobbies and what you need and like, that's the important thing. So you want to base your rank 
on your own college criteria. Myth number three, the best time to visit a college is after you've been admitted. It is important that you start your visiting process well before that. So plan the visits to colleges and, and begin to develop your criteria and then you get your list. So it's important for you. And it, you know, it's a, great, it's a great time to be able to, when you're visiting, when you're on summer break, if your parents are in a certain area and you're all going on a vacation, if you're passing a college, then stop and do an independent tour and look at the college and, and you can gain a lot of knowledge by doing that. And that actually is the beginning of starting your list. You wanna evaluate their academic programs, the social aspect of the college. Can you see yourself there? Do the students, do you feel comfortable with the students that you're seeing? You also wanna look at the financial needs, your financial needs before you start applying to a college. The last thing you wanna do is put several colleges on your list that do not match up with your financial needs. You also wanna to apply to the schools that you have a genuine interest in because it will save you money and time. It's not about applying to 40 colleges. I've never agreed with that and I know a lot of students think that's a strategy when that is not. That is not. So it's important for you to be looking at what, how you want to live for the next four years. Myth number four, if I don't have a perfect GPA, I'll never get accepted to a good college. So there are many well-known colleges, but there are also prestigious academic programs within less known universities. So take the time to look at them. It's really important to do that. And most colleges admit half of the applicants. The average acceptance rate for a four-year college across the United States is 66.1. That's according to NACAC, which is the National Association of College Admissions Counseling. So that, they keep good data. I trust their data. And it's important for you to understand that you will get into a college if you are present, if you are matched well to the colleges. So there is a college for everyone. Myth number five, colleges are looking for a well-rounded student. So what does that mean? Colleges are looking for to create a well-rounded student body. So they're looking to pull in people with various developed aspects. So when we talked about developing that interest, volunteering and things like that. That's what they're talking about. Show a commitment to a, a particular interest because you'll be developed within that. And that's what they're looking for. They're looking for a mix. It's not that important to join every club. It's more important to join one club, develop yourself and be committed to it throughout high school. You also want to connect with your admissions officers, your coaches, and academic advisors to demonstrate your interest, and that's important. So if you see that there's a particular club, if there's a particular sorority or fraternity that you're interested in being in, reach out to them. You also want to develop an intellectual curiosity. And so what does that mean? Well, you might want to learn how to play the guitar. That's actually an intellectual curiosity, but you also may be interested in butterflies. And so you might, uh, you might create your own interest and research and look at, at the migration of butterflies, but have that as an outside interest that no teacher assigns you to. So it's important for you to develop these things. And you want to basically be developing your interests and turn them into your passions. And when we're passionate about something, the great thing is, is you find other people in the community. If the college sees that you would, you're passionate about something that they would like to see more developed on their campus, you're going to be a shoe in. So if you like what you're hearing, we're talking about college admissions 101. This is simple stuff. Try not to let everybody confuse you. It's not really where you go to college that counts, it's what you do when you get there and find the college that you feel the most comfortable at so that you can develop your portfolio and land that career job because that's what it's about. 
colleges accept two thirds of first time freshman applicants. This is so important for you to understand. So be calm about this. And if you are interested in learning more, like and share, and please subscribe to our channel because we're gonna be putting out week to week different tips for you, short tips, so that we're not gonna take up too much of your time, but we're gonna to try to alleviate your stress. Also remember, only a small percentage of the colleges in the US are considered highly selective. And those are the ones that are accepting under 25% of their applicants. So I want you to relax. I want you to stay organized. And I want you to remember that applying to colleges take time. If you want to learn more, then subscribe to our channel. And we'll see you next week.